Good morning. In this lecture, I will start with the most advanced, technologically mature, and high-quality aspect of contemporary learning systems, the technology, knowledge tracing, and the activity it supports, mastery learning, and other uses too. By this point, you should have already completed the spreadsheet tutorial. If you haven't done that yet, stop this video and go do that. So mastery learning. The student keeps working on a topic until they master it. Mastery learning works. Mastery learning has been repeatedly shown to produce better learning outcomes. It improves learning when it's used by teachers through adaptive learning systems, and it improves learning when used by teachers in traditional classrooms. And I literally could have picked dozens of other articles. This is an incredibly well-documented phenomenon. However, if teachers override the mastery learning recommendations, the students do less well. Mastery learning turns out to be something that people knew about long before adaptive learning systems really became scaled. Mastery learning is smooth and seamless in adaptive learning systems, but it's complex and drudgerous in traditional classroom settings, which is probably why it wasn't getting used back in the day. Mastery learning in adaptive learning systems relies upon knowledge tracing. Knowledge tracing, classically, is automated assessments of what a student knows. More recently and controversially, it's automated predictions of which items a student will get right. Historically, people would use predictions of which items a student get right to uh, assess whether the knowledge estimates were any good. Now people have kind of started to just dispense with the knowledge estimates and just predict what items a student will get right. The simplest assessment used in online learning systems is just three in a row correct. As soon as you get three in a row correct, you've mastered it. And if you haven't gotten three in a row correct, you haven't mastered it. Even if you get two right and one wrong and two right, it doesn't count. Another very simple approach is Bayesian knowledge tracing, also called BKT, which is the most widely used algorithm in real-world adaptive learning systems. To learn more about BKT, make sure to watch the required video on BKT. That said, if you've already watched it for another course, you don't need to watch it again. Now, BKT is great. I mean, it's really great. That's why it's been so widely used, but it's got some blatant weaknesses. Here are a few. First of all, it doesn't pay attention to forgetting over time, and the extensions to do so really aren't very good. It also doesn't fit data as well as more recent algorithms. They just predict better. And you need a high quality skill item mapping in advance. You need to know which items go with which cognitive skills, or BKT just doesn't work. And it assumes that all the items within a skill are the same difficulty, which is pretty unlikely to be true. And it doesn't account for the relationships between skills. There are extensions that make BKT able to do this, but they're more for research than real-world use. Here are some competitors. PFA, Performance Factors Analysis. ELO, uh, originally from the world of chess, now used in adaptive learning systems. DKT, Deep Knowledge Tracing. More recent competitors also include LFKT, Learning Factors Knowledge Tracing, FAST, the LKT family's extensions to PFA, and the extensive DKT family, including such luminaries as DKVMN, SACT, LSTM SACT, SAINT, SAINT Plus, LANA, ADKT, KQN, Deep IRT, RKT, and probably 17 others since I recorded this video not very long ago to today. And important for these competitors, there's also the AOA extension, which takes models that were designed to predict performance in the system, not to infer latent knowledge, and puts a little wrapper on top of it so it can also be mapped back to interpretable skills. In picking the best algorithm, there's a lot of dimensions to the debate. Dimensions such as, which model is most accurate at predicting future performance in the learning system? Which model is most accurate at predicting future performance on external tests? Does a model say a student is mastered too quickly? leading to a student moving on who's not ready? Does a model say a student is mastered too slowly, leading to a student wasting time? Does a model display other weird behaviors, such as lowering a knowledge estimate after a correct answer? How much data does a model need in order to function correctly? Can a model take into account situations where an item involves multiple skills? And how much should a model adjust itself to an individual student? Things like rate of learning, amount of guessing, and so on. There's a lot of dimensions to consider when you pick which algorithm to use, for a specific adaptive learning system. We're going to discuss these in detail. You're going to discuss these in detail with your classmates in the VVSD system. So Bayesian knowledge tracing is an old algorithm. It's been used at scale since the 90s. It remains the algorithm 
most widely used in adaptive learning systems. Why is it used so often? There's a few good reasons, despite all of its flaws. One, it's got very predictable behavior, something that the DKT family still struggles with. Two, it gives teachers interpretable estimates of student skill, something that you can't really do with almost any of the others except for like the PFA and LKT family unless you use Scruggs' AOA extension, which people still aren't using. Three, it doesn't require much data to fit, and it performs tolerably even with no fitting at all, which is definitely something you can't say about uh, most of the contemporary algorithms, really any of the competitors except for PFA and ELO. And finally, it estimates knowledge as well as DKT once it has a few data points for a given student and skill. So the extent that the main goal of knowledge tracing is mastery learning, and we want to actually have students do every skill at least a few problems, there's really actually no difference in predictive performance between BKT and all the fancy stuff. So to wrap up, here are today's final thoughts. Mastery learning is good for learning. It leads to better outcomes. Mastery learning is really hard to do in traditional classrooms, but it's easy to do within adaptive learning systems. Mastery learning depends on knowledge modeling, and different knowledge modeling algorithms have different trade-offs. Thank you very much. I'll see you next time.